people today we're doing a set of fall leaf gnome nails and buckle up because it's going to be a long one I'm starting off with extra long coffin nail tips and we're going in with this base color beige from Venalisa I'm calling it beige because I can't possibly be using a nude color for three nail sets in a row that is unheard of now I'll tell you guys up front this set took me five hours to do so I have sped up as much stuff as I could in here um, this was me gearing up with hand painting this gnome uh, to try to start doing character nails this is me like getting my feet wet so I can build up the the uh, oh I don't know not the courage but the I need to get myself built up before I can attempt any of those. But we're going to be doing all of them with this base color. Uh, I'm not super happy with the way this set came out. I had a lot of issues, which you're going to see. Um, what else? I mean, it, it turned out okay, but it, I'm not really like super thrilled about it. So you will see as we go along what happens. I had a very bad week this whole week. Like pretty much nothing has gone right all week for nail stuff and other personal stuff either. So it's a very trying and aggravating week for me. But we powered through and carried on and we're going to get this done today if it kills me. So let's see. I think I have one more to go. And that would be the pinky nail. Now some of the stuff that went wrong I did leave in here so I could show you guys what was going on and so you could hopefully avoid that if you're, you're when you're doing stuff yourself. Okay I have cured those now we're going to be going on to the second coat which I have already put on that one and this one and then the other three are going to have the thumb is going to have an ombre which we'll do next and the uh, other two are going to have a gold glitter polish okay this is the thumb i'm starting with this base color at the bottom for part of the ombre now this is the first time i've done an ombre with mud gels so i wasn't totally sure how it was going to go but it turned out it worked out fine in the end and right now I don't know why we have a blank screen but here we go normally I edit that out okay this one and the, the pinky which might be what this one is and the index finger are going to be this gold polish of beetles everything else I used was uh, the Venalisa mud gels but I did throw in this one Beatles one because I wanted this particular one. And I believe we're going to move on to the ombre thumb. Yes, we are. This yellow is going in the middle. Kind of an orangey yellow. Now, I don't know that I showed it as well on this one. And I'm going to apologize now because there's a lot of stuff out of shot. Like I said, I was having a very bad week. I'm, I'm lucky I got these done at all. But uh, with these mud gels, um, as I said before, I wasn't sure how the ombre was going to go. Then we've got this kind of red-orange on the top. And I'm using the stiffer ombre brush that I have, not the wispy one that I have been using lately. And as it turned out, it worked fairly well for ombre. Now I will be cleaning my brush off in between this top section and the bottom section. Now they may not show that. I don't know. I tried to cut out everything that I could that wasn't fully necessary. Because I knew this was going to get long. Now this is only the first coat. So it doesn't have to be perfect. We will be going over them with the second ombre coat. And also that bearing in mind that it is a mud gel 
It's not self-leveling, so that's why you're going to see a lot more of the stripy looking lines on there. But don't worry about that. That will get uh, taken care of before the end, and you won't see that. Now that's cured, and we're going on with the second coat now. Now up through this whole part of doing the colors on here and the bait and the the glitter nails and that other stuff, up until here everything was going perfectly fine. Now I'm putting a little heavier coat of this mud gel on here for the second layer because I wanted to have a little bit more to blend together to work with. On that first coat it was it got to be a little bit thin. And here we go with the flicking of the brush for the blending. Now this part I did speed up. Um, I think I already said I sped up everything that I thought I could possibly get away with. And I have edited out a lot of stuff. So yeah, this was a long one. A very long one. I think I could have shaved like a whole hour off of this set if uh, I didn't have the difficulties that I had with some of the stuff. Okay, that's ready for curing now. No, it isn't. I lied. <laughs> oh, boy. Also, I would like to note that the days, it took me three days, three afternoons to do these nails, and all three of those days it was 105 in here in my nail room. So not only was I just aggravated because things weren't going well, but the heat was not helping to keep me calm at all. <laughs> okay, this will be the second coat on all of them, and they're going to be cured here in a second, and then we will be moving on. And what I'm going to do as part of... Okay, those are all cured. Um, this is the color that I'm going to be using uh, for the tree. There's a tree that goes down like part of the, you see part of the tree trunk and then some of the leafy part at the top. Well, this is this is what we're doing now. I'm going in with the bulk of the tree trunk in this, this darker brown. And FYI, this is the same brown I'm going to use for outlining everything towards the end. Um, and we're out of shot, so I can't see what I'm doing, but... Ay, ay, ay. Uh, the picture of the gnome that I'm working off of that you will see as we go along uh, was all outlined with black, but I, black just seemed too harsh to go with this, so I didn't do black. I, I used this, this darker brown. And those, I just put those on the top to give me some idea of where branches were going to be and help, help fill in a little background stuff so it looks more leafier at the end. And that is, well, I'm not ready to cure that yet. I almost almost lied to you again. Okay, here's a better version of, of the tree trunk part that's, that's, that is not going to be out of shot. Frankly, if I just uh, did some light and dark sections of this it would have looked like tree bark I could have left it at that and it would have been perfectly fine I think but I had to complicate it a little more because of course I can't do anything easy see that looks like tree bark as it is I should have just left it alone like that And it started getting fatter and fatter because I was getting uh, some bits of stuff sticking out that I didn't want. So this one has a fat tree and the other one doesn't. In the end, those little lines I'm putting at the top of there really were didn't do they didn't accomplish much of anything. So I could have left that off. Okay, now I'm going to get a little tiny bit of that base color that we used, the beige. And I'm going to show you on this one because that other one was out of shot. I'm just going to add a little little dabs of it here and there. Clean my brush off again. And then I'm just going to give it a light brush over. To give it a little bit more dimension in the, in the tree trunk bark area.
And now we've got to go in with a little bit of this because I made some little scraggly lines sticking out. So now it's going to get even fatter than it already was. And I think, nope, we're going to add a little bit more of this now. And a quick brush over. Hopefully not slopping any more out of the tree area. All right, I think I'm good there. There we go with our tree bark. Okay, now this is the method I started off using because I saw somebody else do this recently and it worked well for them. And I have tried this myself before and it didn't go so well. So I don't know why I thought this time would be different. <coughs> Excuse me. But it wasn't. So I'm going to pull, uh, put foil glue on just the bottom of that one and on this entire nail and then we're going to cure all that. Uh, by the way, those tree trunk parts have been cured. Now I have tried this similar thing before and I, it didn't work well for me. So like I said, I don't know why I decided I was going to do it now. These are the leaves we're going to use. These came from AliExpress as per my usual supplier. <laughs> Uh, now I started to open these guys to show you which ones I was going to use and then part way through there were so many I just decided you know what this is ridiculous I'm just going to take the whole top off of this thing so we can see and have better access to these things. <clears throat> now these are made out of some kind of papery stuff they're really super thin so I thought they would be a good candidate to glue down. Uh, with the foil glue they would stick nicely to it but as you will see that was not the case so I'm going to start off with this one where I just had the foil glue at the bottom and I'm just going to start sticking leaves down on there now they started off working okay I think this one came out not bad then, but then we start having problems. Yeah, up until before, right before this, everything was going perfectly fine. And this, this area is where things started going terribly wrong. <clears throat> so you can see, as I keep pushing down the pieces of them, they just keep popping back up. The glue uh, of the, the foil glue didn't seem to be tacky enough to hold these down. Now mind you, these are super thin, made out of paper. I, I really don't understand why they were not stick, staying stuck on there, because they should have been. But they did not. What I was creating on the bottom of this one, hopefully, was like a pile of leaves that the gnome is going to be standing on top of. And I'm going to I tried to get them to stick down with with a silicone tool which I had limited success with and then now I've gone to just pressing them down with my fingers I was trying not to do that because I didn't want to get the tacky stuff all over my gloves but I, but I ended up having to and in the end it's not going to help me a whole lot as you can see they just keep popping back up and for the encapsulating process, I need everything to lay as flat as possible, and it just was not cooperating. Okay, this one I have co coated the entire nail with the foil glue, and now we we are going to try to get these guys to stick on. Now I've used these like branchy, leafier ones for the top of the tree, and once again they started off like working nicely. And then it all just went to hell. Oh, another thing that's been aggravating me all week is I'm covered in mosquito bites, so I'm itching like a son of a gun. The cortisone cream is not doing squat to stop that from happening. So I've got them all scratched up and they're starting to get scabby now, so this looks totally disgusting. Anyway... While you're watching me trying to get these to stick on here, and remember a while back earlier this year, our car was in the shop for like three months with computer issue. Well, 
three weeks ago it wouldn't start again so we took it back to the we had to tow it back to the shop where we did had all the work done they decided it was a computer problem again and so um, after two weeks of being in there or like maybe two and a half weeks uh, they got in they got a new computer they put it in and it still wouldn't work so the mechanic down there just threw his hands up and said I don't know what else to do so now they apparently they have a sister shop so the mechanic over there the head mechanic said he could figure it out so it's now been towed over to that shop so we're three weeks in still without a vehicle as that's our only car for that we have for our family so we're stuck at home now again and having to spend a bunch of money we don't have so we're ordering in groceries and, or, and getting our meds and that kind of stuff. So now if you look at that, you can see they're mostly stuck down. But now is when I need to... Oh, wait, i got to do the thumb first. You can see how they've all popped up, basically. That's what I was trying to show there. And I don't know where I've gone. Oh, yeah, I'm going to foil glue the... Uh, I'm going to put the foil glue on the thumb because at this point I hadn't given up on that yet. So we're going to get this coated up with the foil glue and then it's going to get cured. And while that is getting cured, I think I'm going to start on the base coat of the other one so we can start the encapsulation process like I would normally do it. Okay, so I'm starting off. I'm going to go over those two that I preview that, that I put the leaves on we're gonna go over them with the base base coat get a nice hefty layer of base coat on there and as you can see they're still sticking up at the edges they're not wanting to lay down they're just sticking up and as you guys know with encapsulating you can't have stuff sticking up like that or it just you just can never get it covered and see that it didn't stay stuck to the foil glue it just came right off and that's what started happening with all of these as I'm trying to base coat them. They're just all popping off because I guess I guess the base coat is doing something to the foil glue so that it's not sticking. So, ugh. Okay, so I've done this one. I've got these attached with the foil glue on there and I'm going to base coat this one now. The other ones I had cured with the base coat. Now we're going to do this one. And I believe as I'm base coating this, that some more of those are going to come off. And anyway, back to my story with the car, the whole car business. So we don't have a vehicle again now. This is week three. My husband's been out of work for months now. And now, you know, he can't even go out looking for a job as we don't have a car. They don't have a loaner car to give us. We can't afford to rent one. So we're basically screwed. I mean, frankly, I don't know what we're going to do here. My stuff is not selling. He doesn't have any income. Oh, it's getting really scary. Okay, now I've cured that now. And now I'm going to keep going like an idiot. I'm just going to keep on going here. And I'm going to go in now with the tempered top coat like I would normally do. And as you can see, looking at them, they're still sticking out by quite a lot. They didn't lay down nicely. So I'm going to carry on instead of stopping what I'm doing. I'm going to put a hefty layer of top coat on here and then I'm going to cure these again. It has filled in a little bit of the gap, you know, where the sticking up parts are. But not much so now I've decided I'm going to go over these with builder gel against my better judgment I'm going to go ahead and try the builder gel and you guys are going to see why why I hate builder gel I don't know what the problem is but for me it will not cure I don't know what the problem is with it it's not my lamp before you guys say oh your lamp's not not good enough it's not my lamp I, everything else cures perfectly fine with my lamp and it's a UV LED lamp, so it has both things. So I don't know what the problem is with this stuff. I can never get it to cure. And you'll see as we go along. 
<clears throat> what I'm talking about. But anyway, this was the first layer of Builder Gel. I thought I had them covered fairly well so that I could at least get on with the filing after this. But as you're going to see, nope, that didn't happen. Okay, this one, we're going over this one with Builder Gel also. Now, not only is, are these not staying down, but now my nails have gotten bulked up way more than I wanted them to be. And if you look at the finished set, you'll be able to see on one rack of nails, the thumb looks a lot bigger because it's been bulked up too much. And the other, uh, the other two with leaves on that are on that rack are also bulkier than the other ones. Well, I should have just started over with those at that point, but I, but I plowed through and carried on. And I'm letting that sit upside down so the gel will run to the middle. And now, okay, this is the dumb move of the week for me. As you notice, I have no gloves on now. I had thrown that into cure. That was like the last bit for the day I was going to do. They cured for two minutes, and I, and I thought, I don't want to leave these sit here overnight with that tacky gel because everything is floating around in the air, and there may be gnats in here from my plants. Uh, was going to stick to it and I didn't want to leave it and I had already taken my gloves off and I didn't want to waste another pair of gloves so like an idiot I just went and powered through cleaning off that gel and so now for the rest of the week I've had a breakout on my fingers and my hands have been hurting hi <sighs> so now we're carrying on this is the next day now now I'm going to carry on with the other rack of nails and I'm going to do this in, with the method that I normally use. And I should have just done this on all of them. I don't know why I didn't. In the meantime, though, I have put another layer of builder gel on those nails. And I have put them back in the lamp. And they're in there curing at this point. They've already cured, I think, for two minutes with the first one. Now this is how I get my stuff to stay on when I've got stuff I need to lay flat. I put on base coat, I use my little flashlight, and now look, well if you could see them, look how flat those are when I get this off of here. You'll see how they're perfectly flat to the nail. There's nothing sticking up. Now if I had just done this yet the day before <clears throat> with the rest of those, I could have saved myself so much time and aggravation, but I did not. So I will not be doing that foil glue method again. You guys can give it a go if you want to try it, but I'm, I'm just not going to do it anymore. We're going to go on with these guys now. Well, I know it looks like I'm pressing this down really hard into this, the top of this, but I'm really not. I'm just pressing it enough so that it will uh, press those flat to the nail. And the last bottom part of this What is going on with this last guy? I pressed so hard on that one that I pressed it against the desk and turned off the flashlight. All right. And now look how much flatter they are than the other ones with the foil glue. So I'm going to carry on and I, I believe I've sped this rest of this part up. I'm going to go ahead with the with the method I should have started with and get the rest of these things on here. <clears throat> oh, and of course, now that I'm doing my voiceover, there goes a fire truck. Ay. I'm going to be so happy this week is going to be over. Unfortunately, I don't think it's going to get any better next week. Okay, we've got those branchy leaves on. Now I'm going to go in with some more base coat. I'm going to add in a few more regular leaves. Oh, for Pete's sake, man. Sorry about that. There's a fire station like two blocks from here, so we get this occasionally. Not as now look, my leaf came off as I was trying to cure it. 
So I don't know what was up. Then I start. Then I started having problems getting this to work. So now we're going to add some more base coat. And that one didn't get cured either. That one's moving around on me. I just had the worst time with everything. It's like once the one thing went wrong, everything started going wrong with this set. And hopefully this is going to stay on there this time. Let's see. Um, well, it came off the nail stand, so now I'm trying to get it back on there. Let's see if the leaf stayed on because I've forgotten at this point. Okay, it's on there. It moved a little bit, but that's too bad. That's where it's going to be. And this one is going to go down here. If I can get it to cooperate. And now look, this has been curing now for like five minutes. Look, it doesn't look like it's cured at all. So if I put it back in there for some more time while I finish working on these, I just I just can't figure out why is it, why it doesn't cure. And it's not just that brand either. It's uh, I've got some a different brand of, of builder gel, and it, I have the same problem with that. So I really don't know what I'm doing wrong with it. Okay, this is the this is the other one that the gnome is going to be standing on top of the leaf pile. And hopefully, I don't know why I did so many of those at one time. I probably should have done a couple at a time so they don't move around too much. Hopefully they won't. And I'm just rocking it back and forth a little bit to cover all of them. Let's see. Now we got one spot where it kind of moved around, left a hole, so I'm just going to add another one on there. Come on, you son of a gun. Did you just lay on there properly? Oh, I'm getting aggravated again just watching this now. Oh, that was another thing, too. When I went to do my video edit yesterday, um, all of a sudden the interface was different from where I load my pictures out of my and videos out of my phone into the computer, and I could not get it to work. So after an hour of fooling around with that, I had to call my husband in here. He couldn't get it to work. So we had to go through a whole crazy process to get him out of my phone and into the computer, which I never have to do like that. And we're back, we're base coating these now, by the way. I'm giving them a hefty layer of base coat. And I'm going it from all angles on those leafy bits so the base coat will get underneath anything that is sticking up a little bit and fill it in. And we have one more to get through. And once I get that done, we will cure these. <clears throat> and those are going to go in for curing now. And well, after I hold them upside down for a minute, I'm going to go put them in the cure. Those are the other ones that had the, the gel on them, or the builder gel. It still didn't want to come off. I'm cleaning this off again. I'm, at least I have gloves on this time. Now they don't want to stay on the nail stands for whatever reason. It's like, you know, if you have one of those bad, look, and there's still parts that are sticking up on there. After I cleaned the builder gel off, after two coats of builder gel, I still have a bit. So now we've moved on to filing. 
I have based and topped those ones that had the the builder gel and and you know just gone through that. So now we're doing these have been base coated, top coated with two coats, and now we're on the file and buff routine. Now obviously I have sped this up. Like I said, I sped up everything that I could speed up. And I'm trying to now get some kind of shape back in here. Some of these leaves on this one got filed off a little bit because there was so much filing that I had to do to get them to be smooth. Uh, by the way, I'm using a 100-180 grit uh, buffer and hard file. Okay, I'm finished with that one and I've done the rest off camera and we're moving on now. Now I'm making, now we finally moved on to the gnomes, yay! And I am making a, a base line for where, when I'm going to paint the gnome on here. And as I said, I'm kind of gearing up to try to do some character nails, but this is the color I'm using to do the painting of the gnome the outline. It's kind of a, a sheer, kind of a golden brown. There's the picture I'm working off of. And I believe I have sped this up too because it took me a good while. I went with these big uh, extra long nails so that I would have more real estate for being able to paint the gnome because uh, anything else would have just been, he would have been so small I really would have had a problem painting him. But I'd really like to start doing the character nails. I just have to get my hand painting skills a little better before I try that. I mean, with the character nails, everybody knows what that character is exactly supposed to look like. So if you don't nail it, like, dead on, they're just going to look crappy. And I don't trust my hand painting enough to feel like I could totally nail that. <laughs> okay, we got his hat and his nose. And now I believe I'm going to go in with the beard. And we got his hand that has to come in over here. Yeah, I can say I can tell you I have definitely sped this part up because there was no way I was painting it that quickly. As I'm watching this and it's all zoomed in like this, it looks a lot bigger than what it actually is. Because I'm looking at my brush and it looks like I've got a ridiculous amount of paint on that brush, but there really isn't. Also, I'll tell you guys, I never held my breath so much when I was doing my nails as I was when I was painting these. And to top it off, my hand kept cramping up on me. So I had to keep stopping and like at one point my fingers literally locked up and I could not move any of them. So I had to stop what I was doing, take the other hand, try to bend them back down, get some circulation going in there. Alright, now we have cured that and we are moving on to filling them in. Uh, this is just a white gel polish. I don't know why I didn't pull out the Venalisa mud gel for this part, but this is just uh, this is just a McCart white. Uh, I'm using this because I have a little tiny bottle of it, and it's mostly gone. I'm trying to start using up some of the stuff I've got. But this part, the filling in of the stuff, uh, is like a no-brainer. I mean, that's easy. It's just a little time-consuming, but not that big a deal. I will tell you guys though, I would recommend uh, an advanced uh, advanced experience for doing this. 
And frankly, I don't really consider myself to be advanced. I consider me to maybe be in the intermediate level. But sometimes you got to just swing for the fences and hope you get lucky. And we're going to cure that. And moving on, I've used beetles. Uh, this is a beetles nude that I'm using for the nose and the hands. But other than this and the white, everything else is uh, the Benalisa mud gels, which I've been getting a lot of use out of those, a lot more use out of those lately than I really thought I would. Originally, I bought them, as I've said before, to use for pa you know, for doing painting, just for hand painting and stuff. And I've been finding that I've been using some of those colors just as the polish because there's been colors that I really like. Now that I've cured that, we're moving on. This is the same orangey red or ready red orange that we used for the the uh, ombre of the thumb. But now we're just going to fill in some of the hat stripes. <coughs> Yeah, I think I think I was shaking my hand out there. I think this is where it started really cramping up on me. After uh, all the I went through with this set, I totally get why people charge so much for the character nails. Because holy smokes, man, it takes a long time. It doesn't seem like it's taking that long as you're guys watching this because I've sped everything up. But really, um, I was really painting very slowly when I was doing this. And holding my breath. Okay, and now we need to move down to the, the clothes. So we got his sleeve over here. And the other sleeve. And then we're going to move down to the shoes. I'm trying not to hold this nail stand with like a death grip. I think that's why I was cramping up because I really had a good hold, strong hold of that for a lot of it. I'm trying to be more relaxed and keep my hands from cramping like that. But And here we are out of shot again. I'm so sorry been having a lot of problems with that lately again and I don't know why I thought I had resolved that issue before I think I get so focused in on what I'm doing that I forget to check my phone to see if uh, I'm still in frame there was a dot of something there I don't know what that was but we'll deal with that later okay I've cured that moving on to the last color and this is also the same color from the ombre on the thumbs we're just going to fill in the rest of this hat. Now, if you recall from the gnome picture, the yellow parts of this had a plaid in them on the picture. And there's no way in the world I was about to try to attempt that on this tiny little thing. If it was bigger, I would have gone with you know, being able to put the plaid in there. I think I could have managed it. But just with it being this tiny, it didn't seem like it was worth the effort of trying to do that. So... I left that part off and just did the color. And I was trying to like make them poof out a little bit at the side edges so it looks like roundy, like his hat is slouchy on some parts. If you get what I mean. And I'm sure you do. And we're almost there. All right, I think.
think we're good. And I will cure that now. And now we're going to outline. Now, as I said earlier, this is the same brown I used to do the trees. <clears throat> it called for, well, the, pic the picture had everything outlined in black. But I felt like that was just going to be too harsh for this. So I opted to go with this, the darkest brown that I had used at this point. And this, believe it or not, has been sped up also. Because this did take me a good while to do. This is where you really don't want to have a shaky hand. <laughs> I'm trying to get these to be bulgy looking on the sides a little bit. Some of them worked out okay, some not so much. Also, um, I need to get my lines to be a bit thinner than this, even though when I was painting them, I felt like they were pretty thin, but as I was looking at them uh, in the picture later on, they looked a little too fat still. Now bear in mind that this is zoomed in, so it's going to make it look even fatter than what it, it actually is, but even with that. <clears throat> so while you're watching this part, I will tell you uh, my next set of nails is going to be my own nails again. And I'll be using a thermal polish that I got recently because I wanted to try it out. And I will be hand painting again, but not a character, not a, not something like this. I'm going to be practicing uh, tomorrow, which is Saturday, uh, doing some of that filigree stuff again. Now there was a little bit of polish uh, on that yellow stripe that was sticking up, like with a hard, like piece. So it, I was having, it was giving me problems to paint this line on here. On the upper part of that yellow stripe anyway um, I got these cool uh, practice sheets off alley for doing ha different hand painting designs and I'm gonna be practicing actually before I do the nails for once um, tomorrow I'm gonna spend the afternoon doing that so hopefully see look I'm having trouble getting that to lay down because there's a piece of that paint that's sticking up of the yellow um, I'm going to be hand painting the filigree stuff if all goes well on my own nails and if it doesn't go well I'm still going to use that polish but I'll have to come up with some other design for them which I don't know what that's going to be yet if this doesn't work but we'll see what happens and we're just cleaning off a little bit of where I went over into the beard with the brown and now we're going to move on to outlining of the beard. I suppose I could have sped this up even more than what I did, but I, I'm afraid to speed it up too much. If you really want to see it sped up like super fast and get through these a lot quicker, if you go on, uh, if you're following me on Instagram or TikTok, uh, both of those places I will be posting the same video as a reel uh, and, and a TikTok video and they have been sped up like a lot. My husband puts that part together for me because he, he just likes doing that but um, I don't know how, how, how far he's speeding them up but if considering that I only have a minute and a half of, of real time uh, and this is almost an hour long. It's going to be sped up so quick. It's going to go by really fast. So if you want to see that faster, you can look in either of those two places. And my hand is trying to cramp up on me now still. 
Now I did not cure the, this outline as I went along, which I probably should have, but I just went for it all in one go. At this point, it, I'd been at it so long, I just wanted to get them done. And believe it or not, there's a whole nother process after this is painted that we're going to have to do again. Um, but back, back to what I was saying is I should have cured probably when I got the first of the outline done because when I started to do the beard, the lines in the beard, I had some issues with that. Now I'm seeing I'm filling with that up there again where that piece of yellow polish was sticking up. Anyway, um, the beard lines, I had trouble with those, so I had to wipe off some of it and go again, which it would have been a lot easier to do if I had cured them like right now before I started the beard line. I mean, these needed to be a lot thinner. I think these were, were too fat in here too. You know, this one went horribly wrong. <laughs> now I have an F on there. Frankly, that's about uh, what I was feeling, if you catch my drift, uh, when I was doing this at that point. I was feeling F'd. <laughs> but I don't like the way that is, so I'm going to clean that off here in a second. I've just got alcohol on there and I'm just going to take that off without hopefully hitting any of the other lines that I've already done. Which I think I got lucky there. Alright, I guess that's livable. And like I said, they didn't turn out horrible, but they still there's still plenty of room for improvement. All right, there he is, ready to be cured now. Boop, okay, we have cured that. Now what I'm doing is I'm painting on, or attempting to paint on the line for the leaf stem that he's going to be holding. If you go back and reference the picture I'm working off of, he's hanging onto a stem of a maple leaf or some such leaf that looks like a maple leaf. So that leaf laying on my mat is the one I'm going to attached to this. I did not want to try hand painting a leaf at this point. So I'm just going to use one of these leaves that I've already been using. And I'm trying to get this to line up so it, it makes sense with the bottom of the stem that's coming out of the bottom of his hand. But I have cured that and now we're going to go over here with some more base coat again. Here we go again guys. And just going to put it where the leaf is going to go because we're going to even this all out later. And we will get the leaf on here. And I did have a lot of problems with this at this point. Wow, son of a gun. It's actually raining out there. I don't believe it. I'm kind of in shock. All right. Uh, okay, now this one worked, I think. I think this guy worked to stay on. Others of it did not. Okay, it's on there, more or less. I'm just going to keep pressing down the edges to make sure it is staying down all the way. Boy, it's really starting to come down out there. At least it'll help cool it off somewhat. Or it'll just get muggier, one of the two. Okay, that leaf is mostly laying flat. You can see at the very edge, it's not fully down. But we're going to see there on this bottom of this, there's kind of a gap in the middle there. Well, I'm going to put one there too. Because I didn't like that big gap. And it now smells like rain in here. Okay, we're going to try to get this one to cure on there. Ok, 
Okay, let's go with that. Let's press that on for a second, or for a few seconds. And voila. Oh, nope, look at that. Came right off on my thumb. Now how the heck did that happen? All right, take two. We're gonna go in with some more base coat because now that one's cured. We're gonna stick that leaf back on there. Like for Pete's sakes, man, cooperate. I was just about ready to chuck this whole set out the window about by now, about that point. And we're going to try it one more time. Let's see if that works. And it moved around, but I think it's stuck on at that point. Let's see if we can see it. Nope, it's back off again. Okay, at that point now, I had had enough. So now I'm breaking out the nail glue. And I'm just going to glue that sucker on there. When all else fails, nail glue. And that is way too much, I can tell you, by looking at it. But at that point, I just didn't care. I wanted it done. And now we're going to hold this on there for a little bit. In hopes that it's going to stick and lay down semi-flat. Okay, success. It's not as flat as I would like, but it's on there, so we're going to move on. Okay, now we're going in with base coat. Now we have to do the whole base top file and buff routine with this again. And I'm going along, putting my base on there. And look, that bloody leaf is off of there again. Well, I'm just leaving him stick there in the base coat, and I'm just going to cure him like that. Okay, I have cured that. I've done two layers of top coat, and now we're in into the file and buff part. I'm going to get my sides, hopefully in some kind of decent shape, with the hard file and any sticking up bits. I'm going to take off with the hard file. When I get that done, I will switch over to the buffer. Now, I did, as you've already seen with the other one, I did end up filing through some of my leaves a little bit which I'm not happy about but at the point I was at I was just I don't care anymore I just want to get this done needless to say if I were going to do this set for somebody else to sell I would be doing a much uh, better neater job of things but we'll see what happens more buffing and are we done nope we're still in a little more Okay, I think I might be done now. Now I just got to get them back on the nail stand. Okay, we are now ready for the final top coat is going on now. I've filed and buffed and put my all my leaves on and done all that n nonsense on everything off camera. And I'm going in with the final top like I said. I toyed with doing these as a mat but decided uh, against it. And went with shiny. See, just dropped my brush there, getting top coat all over my desk. Hey, it just never ends. There's that guy that gave me so much trouble. And final top on there. And then the pinky. And we're in the home stretch now, guys. Believe it or not. And we're going to give that a cure. 
in a second. And we're done! Yay! I thought I'd never see the end of this set. Well, I hope you guys like these. They were a pain in the butt and a lot of work. If you do like them, please give me a like. I'd really appreciate it. And if you want to see more, I upload a new video every Saturday. Uh, also, like I mentioned, on TikTok and um, Instagram. And here's a close-up set of just those two. I will see you guys next time. Bye-bye.